Hello everyone, and thanks for joining me in this walkthrough of Painter new baking features. Painter 8.3 has a brand new baking mode that gives you more control over the baking process while letting you interact dynamically with your mesh. Now don't be afraid if this all sounds a bit overwhelming or if you're used to Painter former baking system. We're going to take each step at a time. There are several ways to access the new baking window. The first one is by going to the top right of the viewport where a little croissant icon has now appeared. If you don't see it, no worries, it can get hidden by one of these panels. You can also go to the mode menu up here, where you can access all the different modes in Painter, baking mode, painting mode, rendering mode, etc. Alternatively, you can use the shortcut F8. You can at any point return to painting mode by clicking here on return to painting mode, or by clicking on the brush icon here. All right, so we are now in the brand new baking interface of Painter. If you were used to the previous one, or if you're new to Painter, this may be a little daunting, so please bear with me as I go over each panel. Keep in mind that a lot of familiar actions are still available in baking mode. You can display the 2D view just as in painting mode. The environment settings, log and history are still in the right toolbar. And like everywhere else in Painter, you can undock and move around panels to your own liking. Now let's go over the interface itself. On the top right, you'll find your texture set list along with your UV tiles. Notice that both the texture sets and the UV tiles are selectable, allowing you to bake only specific parts of your mesh. Right beneath it are the individual bakers with the common settings on top. This looks pretty similar to Painter's former baking system, but some things are new, such as this little links icon next to each baker. We will go over this in a bit. Then on the right are the baker's settings displaying the parameters of whatever baker you have selected. These panels follow a natural hierarchy. You can think of it as a path that gets more and more specific. You start by choosing what texture sets and UV tiles you want to bake, then you specify the type of baking you want to do, and finally you adjust the settings of the bakers. Below it are the baking logs. This is a partly new feature that lets you keep track of not only the baking process, but also the loading of your high-poly meshes, as well as any potential mismatch between your high-poly and low-poly. These logs are very useful, as they will not only display a warning, but also point you towards the source of the problem. Now let's move on to one of the most important features of this update. I'm talking, of course, about the viewport. As you can see, we have our project mesh here, but it looks somehow different than in painting mode. That's because if you pay attention to the panel attached to the left here, we have several overlays to help us. Namely, the yellow tint and wireframe depicts the cage that represents how the rays will be cast during the baking. To better illustrate this, let's prepare a simple bake. I'm going to load my high poly meshes here in the common settings. And see how the loading is tracked in the log? Perfect. Now you'll notice that something has changed in the viewport. A blue layer has appeared underneath the cage. That's the high poly model. You now have three elements displayed at the same time. The low poly mesh that is a bit buried underneath everything else here, the high poly mesh and the cage. Now what is great about this feature is that it allows for direct visual feedback as you fiddle with your cage. No more blind tweaking. Here, for example, the cage offset is way too big. So let's reduce the max frontal distance until the cage tightly wraps around our model. If we go too far, matching errors will start to appear in red, helping us find the right balance. We can now inspect our mesh and search for missing areas, and simply adjust the cage accordingly. To make those fine adjustments easier, the sliders are now exponential instead of linear, meaning you can tweak values within a very small range. If you accidentally went too far and want to go back to your previous setting, you can also undo your last action with Ctrl Z. Now let's go over the baking visualization panel in more details. First off, you can always disable all the overlays by clicking here on the hide icon. It's especially useful if you want to see your project mesh only to check the result of a baking pass, for example. You can also choose to see the baking meshes only for the selected texture set. If you combine that with the focus mode of your texture sets, you can isolate the part of your project that you want to focus on. Below that is your high poly mesh, if you have any. Like the rest, you can customize it or disable it altogether, which can prove useful if your mesh is very heavy and is eating up too much of your memory. 
I personally hide it once I'm happy with my cage. Next up is the cage that instantly reflects the value you set up in the common settings. And here again, you can disable it, change its color, its opacity, etc. Then we have an option to display missing seams on hard edges. I don't have any on that mesh, but we'll take another example in a moment. And finally, we have our project mesh, or LP for low poly. This is what remains when you disable the baking visualization. Notice that it comes with a neutral material that you can adjust to better inspect your mesh after the baking. For example, it can be interesting to make it smoother and metallic to search for any artifacts or errors. You can also decide how much ambient occlusion you want, if you want to display the bent normals, and so on. Don't forget that at any point you can reset your parameters to default by clicking here. Alright, we're now happy with our settings, so let's launch a simple bake. Like I said earlier, it's best to follow the logical path that goes from the texture set selection to the baker's settings. For the sake of this example, I'm going to bake the whole mesh, so I leave all texture sets selected. As for the bakers, for now I'd like to experiment with the normal only, so I'm going to deselect all the others by alt-clicking it. Now careful here. You'll notice that if I select my other texture sets, they still have the other bakers selected. And that's because I need to explicitly apply my selection to all texture sets by clicking here on Apply Selection to All. Now, only the normal will be baked across all texture sets. OK, I'm all set. Let me just change the output resolution and click on Bake Texture Sets. Just as before, you can choose to bake only the texture set currently selected if you want. Now, prepare to be amazed. Baking is no longer a process that freezes your interface. You can interact with your mesh as it gets baked and inspect tricky areas to make sure you don't have any errors. Now that the baking is finished, I'm going to disable the overlays to check if everything is OK. Like in painting mode, pressing B will display the baked map. So I'm going to cycle through them until I get to the normal map. OK, all looks decent, except this. Something went wrong with the cloth, so let's investigate what happened. Pressing M to go back to material mode, and hiding the cage and the low poly to check the high poly mesh. See? The claws are missing here, hence the wrong baking that we got in that area. There are different ways we can fix this. We can open our mesh in the modeling tool that we used and re-export a high poly version of the claws and then upload it back in Painter. Or we can decide that we don't really need a high poly for that and simply bake the low poly onto itself by enabling use low poly mesh as high poly mesh. As soon as I do that, the high poly mesh disappears but it does so for all the texture sets, and this is not what I want. What happened is that, by default, the common parameters are synchronized across all texture sets, hence the link icon that I mentioned earlier. But there is now a new feature that lets you break that link and adjust the common settings per texture set. So let's uncheck that first, and making sure we are in the right texture set, the close one, click the link icon next to the common parameters. It brings up a pop-up window that says, and let me read that for you, that all the selected texture sets will share the same common parameters. In other words, if I want one texture set to have different settings than the others, all I have to do is to uncheck it from that list. The link has now disappeared for this set, meaning that we can now tweak its parameters without affecting the other texture sets. See? If I change the cage, it only changes for the claws. The other texture sets, on the other hand, remain linked and so the cage offset stays synchronized for them. We can now enable the low poly as high poly option and relaunch a bake for the claws to see if it fixes the issue. And it does. Being able to synchronize or desynchronize the common settings allows for a much more granular workflow, letting you adjust each texture set individually. You could, for example, have a different group of high poly meshes, different resolution, and so on. This takes a bit of practice to get used to, so let me switch to another project to better illustrate it. So I now have this low poly gun that I'd like to bake. I've uploaded the high poly alright, but I've already noticed an issue. Painter warns me that it found a hard edge without a seam here. This is the pink outline that I mentioned earlier, 
And if we inspect the mesh real quick in Blender, we can understand better what's going on. A hard edge means that the vertex normals between two faces are split. If I smooth this edge back, then my vertices normal will average in the middle like so, allowing for a clean, continuous bake. If I keep them split, then the baker will have to interpolate somehow that gap between the two normals, and it will result in artifacts, because there is not enough space between the faces in the UVs. To fix this, I can either smooth that edge or separate the UV islands by adding a UV seam here. In this case, I'm just going to smooth it, re-export the mesh, and reload it in Painter by going to Edit, Re-import Mesh. See? The issue is gone, and so is the pink outline. This is a very helpful visual cue because it's easy to miss those artifacts, especially on complex meshes. Now let's set up our bake. Selecting all my texture sets, and to go faster, I can simply expand the menu here and click on Select All Texture Sets and UV Tiles. Then choosing what I want to bake. In this case, I'd like to focus on the normal, ambient occlusion, and curvature. Now remember, if I want to share that selection across texture sets, I have to go to the top right corner here and click on Apply Selection to All Texture Sets. I can also do it individually per baker. Say, for example, I want to add the thickness to it. Then I can right-click the baker and say Apply Thickness to All Texture Sets. And then thickness will be baked everywhere. It's a quick way of adding a baker without disrupting the rest of your setup. Now you may have noticed that we can also synchronize or desynchronize settings between texture sets. As you see from the link icon here, the bakers are by default synchronized across all texture sets. And in most cases, this is just as well. So for example, if I decide to bump up the secondary rays of the ambient occlusion baker to have a better occlusion quality, this value will be passed on to all the texture sets by default. But since this might also make the process heavier, maybe I want to tone that down for less visible parts of my mesh, like the trigger, for example. Now, if I want to isolate this set and assign a lower value to it, it's the same process as with the common settings. Simply click on the link next to the relevant baker, then uncheck the texture set you want to single out. Now, again, the ambient occlusion settings remain linked for all texture sets, except for the trigger that I can now adjust separately. I can always resync everything by clicking on Sync Settings, and my trigger ambient occlusion will go back to the group settings. Now, in the case of this asset, it proves very useful. If it's going to be animated later on, and the magazine of the gun, for example, is one of the removable parts, then I don't want to bake in the occlusion that comes from the case. See, this would be a problem. To fix this, the usual solution is to go to the common settings, scroll down to the match menu, and select match by mesh name. This ensures that the various parts of the mesh won't occlude each other. But in this case, I do want that mutual occlusion. I just don't want it on the magazine because it's eventually going to be animated. Thanks to the split parameters, I can now enable the match by mesh name only to certain texture sets, allowing me to fix the occlusion for the movable parts. All I have to do is go to the common settings of the magazine texture set, desynchronize it, then enable match by mesh name. Notice that as soon as I do that, I get a warning from the matching by name log. It has listed all the meshes that miss a low poly equivalent. In our case, this won't be a problem, this is great for tracking naming errors and inconsistencies. Now I also need to go to the occlusion baker, desynchronize it too, and select here as well only same mesh name. Okay, so let's launch the bake, focusing on the magazine by hiding the rest, and investigate the result. Ah, see here I have a cage issue. The rays don't go deep enough, so let's just fix that in the command settings, increase the max rear distance. Perfect. I now have a clean bake for the magazine and it will stay consistent even when the magazine moves or is reloaded. Let's sum up what we covered in this video. So you can now access the baking window by clicking on the croissant icon on the top right corner of the viewport or by pressing F8. New logs have been added to the baking window, letting you keep track of your high poly meshes and warning you of any problem or mismatch.
an interactive viewport has been added with baking overlays that give real-time visual feedback to help you adjust your settings and troubleshoot issues. And you now have the ability to synchronize or desynchronize even the common parameters per texture set, which gives you much more control over how to bake specific parts of your mesh. We hope you enjoy these new features and that they will help you create even more beautiful artworks.